Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting and educational episode of The Writing Lair. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Brady Longmore. I'm an independently published author. I have four books currently in publication and I'm working on book number five as we speak. Uh, here at The Writing Lair, I like to talk about reading, uh, writing, you know, like writing tips and writing advice and, and kind of publishing advice, marketing advice, that kind of thing. I'll focus through that uh, independently self-published lens, if you will. But I also like to talk a lot about the paranormal, the scary stuff, UFOs, ghosts, Bigfoot, you know, mysteries, the kind of that dark, the dark side of uh, uh, things. So if that sounds like it's of interest to you, then we are possibly and probably kindred spirits. And I invite you right now to go uh, down and click the subscribe button at the bottom of this video and the like button. Help me out, help out a fellow starving artist or, uh, you know, just let's, let's, you probably belong here anyway. So uh, uh, join us here at the Writing Lair. For those of you already subscribed, thank you for being here. I'm glad you're here. And uh, let's go ahead uh, and get this episode on the road. Okay, so for this episode of The Writing Lair, um, first of all, I wanted to give a shout out to new subscriber. Uh, in the last video, he made some comments, he or she, I don't, because I, I, the name, <laughs> I've got my notes, my notes here, my, my, my never before nicotine stained fingers, as a certain famous broadcaster used to say, sort of. Uh, the YouTube new user's name is AAC729. And a little shout out. Thank you for your subscribing and your commenting. And this person reminded me that we have a birthday in the family. The Writing Lair has a birthday to celebrate. And uh, here she is. She's she's one years old today, or <laughs> this week. Uh, my first, the first uh, uh, book one of the fifth corner trilogy is a year old and I can't believe it time has flown so happy birthday fifth corner it was an exciting time last year at this time releasing my trilogy and uh, for those of you who aren't aware all three books are published they're out so uh, why not uh, make this your summer binge read uh, you could buy all three books and and you don't have to wait for the next installment you just blast through them and from what I've heard from people that that's exactly what happens. You blast right through. So uh, go ahead, go to Amazon.com. Pick yourself up a, you know, the the fifth corner. Let's celebrate her her first birthday. Anyway, uh, we'll move on from there. But a little plug, you know. Hey, I I'm allowed to plug my own stuff, right? Okay, <laughs> just you know, go pick up go pick up a copy. You'll you'll like it. It's good. It's it's pretty good. I I've, I've been told. I've been told. Okay, um, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, this is actually the like the third time I've recorded this video because uh, it uh, keeps coming out too long. So I decided I'll break it up into different parts. So for I'm gonna make this a little shorter and uh, just make this uh, this video. I just want to do. It's another. It's gonna focus on writing again, like the last one did. I do have it. I do have a scary, creepy story. Um, I did tell it in my first take, and it's so creepy and dark, and it's true. I just don't know if I should share it almost. I'm kind of struggling with it. I, after listening to myself actually tell the story, I kind of like, hmm, maybe I should, maybe that's a little too much. I don't know. It's, it's, it's got disturbing content, so and it's, a, it's a true story. So if it wasn't true, you know, it's different. But anyway, I'm debating now whether I should share that story. So I decided to cut it out, and I decided to make... Uh, I got my notes here. Sorry, I, I keep fidgeting with them. I keep my hands off my notes. Today's episode is going to be about... Uh, it's going to be about writing. It's uh, about how to write 
interesting, uh, realistic characters that your readers are going to care about. And that's, to, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but if you want to write great stories, writing great characters is number one, <laughs> okay? Doesn't matter. I've, I've talked about this a little bit before. I've touched on it in my other videos that how um, if you don't have great characters, no one's going to care about your story. And how many of you have been in a movie or reading a book, but and, and everything seems to be uh, going well, you know, the special effects are good, the setting's great, there's there's lots of action and stuff, but you just, you, you don't seem to, you're, you're kind of bored with it, you're putting the book down, you're, you find yourself, your mind wandering as you're watching the movie. Well, chances are, if that's happening, it's because you're not invested with the characters. So, um, that's what I want to talk about a little bit, and I'm not an expert, okay, I've in fact, if I, anybody watching this that's a writer, please leave your comments in, you know, any, anything you'd like to add to what I have to say, please, by all means, you know, make, make some comments. Uh, I'd love to learn, I'd love to learn from y'all. So, uh, I've got this list here of some, some things I wanted to touch on about making or writing good characters. And the first thing I have written here is empathy. Without empathy empathy how how can you expect to 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 uh write characters that people are going to care about so um i've always had the ability to step into other people's shoes mentally um it's just kind of a natural inclination of mine i guess i'm i, I hate to admit it but i guess i'm kind of kind of sensitive <laughs> A little sensitive to the plights of others around me, I guess. When I was a little kid in school, or uh, uh, you know, if I saw if I saw bullying going on, I was really sensitive to that. I, I I was right there with, in my heart, I was right there with the kid with the poor kid getting picked on, and I I could feel you know I just had this ability to to feel what they're feeling and and really put myself in their shoes. I so I do that as a writer too. Even though the characters aren't real, um, I make them real to me, and and I put myself in their shoes, and and I try to think, you know, how how is he or she feeling in this moment? What's going through their mind? What what would it feel like to have this happen to me? And what how would I feel? And uh, you know, I, I'm assuming if you're a writer, you have an imagination. It takes imagination to uh to have empathy so the i i imagine that most people watching this that are interested in writing probably know what i'm talking about because you're probably already uh because of your imagination and your creative cre creative creativity <laughs> you're probably already um kind of you you're probably um with me on this and understand what I'm talking about so but that's that's a key thing now <clears throat> let's get into um, I wanted to put I wanted to um, set something out there right off the bat and that is uh, a good character doesn't always have to be likable and I think a lot of a lot of first-time writers just getting into it they want to make their characters super likable and and uh, so they end up writing these kind of infallible um, uh, characters that do everything right and, and, and everything about them is awesome and uh, that's not necessarily good and I, I have a couple of examples from from TV shows one, one of the shows I wanted to point out was uh, Breaking Bad uh, with the, the main character is Walter uh, White and he's played by Brian Cranston and he's a character. He's a. It's a. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's about a school teacher that uh, gets cancer and and starts cooking meth and selling it to to pay for his his medical bills. And uh, he starts out as a law abiding, straight laced guy who just kind of like because of uh, crazy circumstances, extreme circumstances, force his hand to do something he normally wouldn't do. That's a great setup right there. And that that's great. That's what you want to do as a writer. You want to put your character. You want to take 
because people can sympathize with that, right? Uh, a lot of people have been faced with medical bills and stuff, and 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 then that's one of the biggest fears. People people are afraid of having some catastrophic medical expense, and, and how would I pay for it? And so here's this normal guy that we can all identify with, a school teacher, and he's placed in this extreme position where he's gonna leave his he's gonna he's gonna die and leave his family with these bills, and he doesn't want to do it, so he starts putting his knowledge he's a chemistry teacher so he puts his knowledge to uh to use and starts cooking amazing meth okay i don't want to tell the whole show but you all know what i'm talking about that have seen it the thing is this this character by the end of the series i hated him I, he becomes a despicable person really a, a very despicable person and and uh, I, I don't even, I didn't even like him towards at the end of the of the series. Now, does that mean that the writers were screwing up? That the writers were doing a bad job? No. Just because I didn't like him doesn't mean he's not a great character. And he's a, he's, uh, I even though I didn't like this guy, I still cared about what he was going to do, what was going to happen, what was going to happen to him. I still was invested in him. And uh, that's a sign of brilliant writing. Okay, that's I, 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 I want to get that good someday. And, uh, so watch that show. It's rough, but if you want an example of a great main character who is not necessarily likable, but you identify with, and then in the end you even don't like him, but you still care about what happens to him. Breaking Bad's a good example. Uh, another another example uh, that's kind of the same is uh, there's a show called Turn, Washington Spies, starring Jamie Bell, I think is his name. He plays a, a spy in the revolution for Washington's side, and, and you just want to reach through the screen and choke him because of some of the choices he makes. And you would think, like, your instinct is you think, well... I hate it. I hate this character so much. The, the the show is screwing up. They they shouldn't be making me hate this character so much. Well, I didn't hate him, but he, you know he was frustrating me because of his decisions. That was actually even that was even more brilliant. Okay, whoever whoever's doing the writing on that show for that character was was brilliant because they're making me care about this guy. Care I was invested enough. If I wasn't invested. He can make stupid decisions, and I don't care. But the fact that I cared was like, urgh, urgh. another example is uh, Uhtred from um, the final, the Last Kingdom, the Last Kingdom. Uh, the character Uhtred, the main character, he, kind of the same, th same thing. You know, you, you, his decisions are driving you crazy, but you realize deep down inside, it's because you care about him. It's like watching your kid make a stupid decision. You care. If you didn't care, then you would just, you know, whatever. Well, go ahead and let him rush off into battle, into some stupid fight. He's going to get himself killed. Anyway, God, kind of went long on that. How much, how much time am I into this? Jeez Louise. I'm, time goes by fast. Uh, anyway, those are some examples of great characters. And let me talk a little bit about writing them and how to create your own. So those are some shows you can watch and just take notes. Um... The thing is, is this is a topic you could you could probably hold, uh, you know, lecture after lecture. A whole you could teach a whole college course on just writing char characters. So I, I can't touch on every single thing I wanted to, but I just wanted to touch on some some main points here. Um, and uh, one thing to to keep in mind when you're writing your character is the character needs to be in conflict. Uh, you know, I, t I talk about he, the character needs to be the plot is driven by the conflict that affects the character kind of so the character wants something you got you have to as, as the author as the creator of this character you have, have to ask yourself what does this character want what does he or she want most out of life what's the goal what do they want and then the second question is What's keeping them from obtaining that goal, from getting that wish? And that's the conflict. Why can't they, what do they want and why can't they have it? 
and that drives the story that drives the plot them trying to get it um, maybe they don't get it you know in the end and that's kind of another thing is that it, uh, success isn't always you know or, or it shouldn't be easy but uh, that's why that's why like out of all the superheroes I, I've never literally identified well with Superman because he's because to me he's always been too powerful too he's just he's just too powerful too much power you know what is he shoots lasers out of his eyes he can fly he can you know it, he's not just strong he's he's like uh, I don't think there's any limit to his strength is there he can lift any any weight you know he can wrap up a tons and tons of, of nuclear warheads and swirl them around his head and throw them into the sun or something like I think I saw a cartoon read that, that you know just ridiculous uh, abilities and no hardly any any flaws hardly any weaknesses at all uh, freak is that his girlfriend can be killed and all he has to do is uh, fly around the planet in reverse you know reverse the planet's rotation and and he turns back time come on <laughs> so sorry to you superman fans out there i do like him he's awesome but i don't identify well with him i identify better with like batman you know uh, uh captain america they those guys don't shoot fireballs out of their eyes they they you know they can't reverse time they can't fly uh, they definitely are more fallible uh, they're, they're not perfect they have flaws Anyway, so it's important to give your characters uh, flaws. And uh, uh, when you're writing heroes, you've got to have a hero that people want to see a capable, you know, competent hero. They like, people like reading about incredible people doing incredible things. But don't make them perfect. Don't make them too competent. Don't make them too awesome. Uh, or they become boring. There's no, there's no danger, you know. There's, there's no, uh, there, there's no threat that anything bad could really happen to him. And so, you know, that's that's why they have to give Superman Lois Lane because, because uh, nothing can happen to him, but things can happen to her. <laughs> so that that's how they that's how they created problems in the Superman world. I I believe I didn't read a lot of comic books, but. Um, I, I, uh, I'm looking at my notes. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. Very, so competent, not perfect. I'm going to check my time here. Okay, I have time just to go into what I, I kind of wanted to just close out the video talking about, uh, um, to give another example of a great character and how he was written really well and, uh, and the way they did it and went about it. So, uh. I, I'm going to finish this little uh, video talking about my favorite, Dr. Jones. Maybe you all uh, have noticed that I, I might be a bit of an Indiana Jones fan. I always have. Um, but let's, let's talk about him. Is he cool? Yes. Is he competent? Yes. Uh, let's, let's, um, in fact, let's talk about the first scene in the first movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, You've got, this is our, our introduction to, to Indiana Jones. And it, it was done brilliantly because you have this scene where you, you have people going through the jungle, ominous music. Uh, you've, you've got, uh, they're, they're looking for something. You've got the scene where they, they come up to, you haven't met him yet. You come up to a waterfall. You've got him like placing the, piecing a map together and there's a, a gun cocks behind his head he twitches his head he hears the gun out comes the whip and he and he snaps the whip and and uh and he's able to, to snap the gun out of the bad guy's hand the guy runs off and now you we, now we see this guy for the first time and you know we're we're just as awestruck as his remaining helper at what just happened and that's our first clue we realize this guy is freaking awesome okay so that's our first meeting of Jones dr. Jones but we find out very in very short order he's very capable they go into the temple 
to get the idol. He's in there. He, he's he's de- defeating these booby traps. He's swinging over over uh, pits with a whip. Just the coolest stuff you've ever seen. You know, if you're a kid growing up in 1980. And he finally makes it up to the idol here he is and what happens he screws up he, he he miscalculated the weight and sets off the main booby trap he he's he ends up running for his life uh, he, uh, he, he barely makes it out of this crumbling temple by the skin of his teeth he's got the idol sure but then what he gets out and his his uh, main rival his main competitor Belloc is waiting for him with with an army of natives, armed natives, and and he has the this golden idol, this thing he wanted, promptly uh, taken away from him. And then the next thing we see is him running for his life. He's being shot at by arrows, and spears are being thrown at him. And he's he makes it uh, makes it to this airplane just in the nick of time. Barely gets out with his life. And then the next thing you see is. Uh, he's sitting in the plane, and there's a, this snake crawling up his leg, this python. <laughs> and, the, and then we find out that he's terrified of snakes. This cool, you know, ice in the veins, ice water veins, cool hero adventurer is terrified of snakes. Great job, great job, George Lucas, for coming up with a, a, a great character uh, that can... Uh, I mean, he followed these rules, these 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 points I've written down as far as making a character that's competent, but also giving him flaws. He don't he, he's not perfect. He makes mistakes. If you watch through the whole all the shows, uh, quite often he flubs something and makes mistakes. He's he, he's not as he's very competent, and and you trust him. He's gonna eventually get the job done, but not without some bumps and bruises along the way. You know, and uh, he he sometimes you know he he might not quite land the punch just right, or you know uh, he he'll he'll screw this up or screw that up, and that that presents a lot of opportunity to to for humor too. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's just a little bit about my thoughts on writing uh, believable and uh, uh, realistic characters that people are going to care about, and that's the bottom line. Whether your character ends up a hero or ends up a heel, do the are the uh, are your readers gonna care about him in the end, regardless? And so, um, it, it's the same with like lots of movies and shows. You hear people are upset about how some show ended. Oh, I hated the ending. It's like it's because you cared so much about the characters. That's why. So they don't realize it that they're. <laughs> in a way that their emotions have been manipulated because if if you really really like loved a show and hated the ending you know well you can hate the ending but realize that if you were that into it then whoever was writing that give him some credit because he made you care they made they made you care that hard so that's that's kudos to the writer even though I mean endings are hard endings are hard if you if you've tried it if you've written much uh, uh, making a satisfying but exciting ending is not easy and for me it's hard I can I can write middle stuff and little things and scenes and all day long but when I'm trying to wrap it all up and create a nice neat ending it's not easy to do and that's kind of where I'm at right now with book five but anyway <laughs> grinding it out I'm grinding it out I'm working on it, I promise. For those of you that are waiting, I appreciate your patience. But I do want to, I want to make the best, I want this to be the best it can be. I'm not just, I don't want to just phone it in. It's tempting, it, 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 sometimes it's tempting to just kind of phone it in, write up, write an ending and publish and, and on to the next project. But that's, I can't bring myself to do that. I'm, I'm going to make it as good as, as good as I, as my capabilities will allow. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, episode of The Writing Lair. I've gone on long enough. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Those of you who have not subscribed yet, once again, please permit me to plead with you. Uh, Subscribe to the video. I promise to continue to 
uh, do my best to bring educational and entertaining uh, content your way and uh, again help a struggling artist help me grow this channel and uh, oh I almost forgot this week's book recommendation um, let's see I gotta pull it up here I got I had it okay the book I was gonna recommend and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it is actually called 11 63 some of you historians might know that that is the date of the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States at the time. The book is by Stephen King, and it is excellent. Uh, one of his best, in my opinion. One of his, one of the best Stephen King books I've read. It's not scary, so it's in the same vein. You know, if you like Shawshank Redemption and Stand by Me, you know, The Green Mile, the books that aren't necessarily horror, but really good. Uh, let me let me highly recommend eleven twenty two sixty three. It's a it's a time traveling book, and it's a, a the, in a nutshell, it's about a guy who travels back in time and tries to stop the assassination of JFK. And when you fight time, sometimes time fights back. Anyway, really good book. Highly recommend it to you. Uh, they actually they actually have made a a little mini series out of it. I think James Franco is in it. I've watched it, it's really good too, but read the book way better and uh, learn a few things along the way, some history. Okay, all right, that's gonna do it this time. This time I'm really I'm really signing off. Thanks again uh, and uh, we'll uh, be, I'll be dropping another episode as soon as uh, possible. Uh, happy Independence Day to those of you. If, if I don't drop one before then, then you know, it's getting that time of year. So happy Independence Day, have a happy and safe fourth and uh, until we meet again, I wish you all happy reading.